No time to rest now. Yes, any time. If you need to rest later, it's okay by me. You don't have to be a hero. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and s mm -mm -mm -mm. You see candles planted on broken on a broken rangefinder. I kinda wanna sleep. Moth bitten bed sheet. Which keeps the wind out. And what do we got up here? A scarf, huh? Army surplus. I mean, it gives me more empathy. I'm not we why am I not wearing anything around my goddamn neck? I could have my drama thing. Or ooh, my eight eye teratorn tie. Yeah, that works now. I completely forgot about that. I'm glad I remembered. What do we got over here? I just feel like maybe I should explore, like, know what's going on here before I go to sleep. It might not be safe, you know? Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor on a makeshift cupboard. They're not particularly well organized. Sift through them. Most of soft covers, serialized fantasy, and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic animal adventures. Popular depictions of man versus nature by amateur naturalist T and T Harpin, husband and wife. Widely read by people from all walks of life. Who who doesn't like nature? Who doesn't want to survive? Among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathodic for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp, light erotica, and international and an international thriller about circuit benders. Someone's made themselves a home. Lieutenant Inspector's soft cover. Uh, does anything stand out as unusual? Yeah, I guess we should figure that out. First fucking try! Oh yes. Under the bed there is a rather extensive collection of critical theory. That is dour, life non-affirming left-wing lit literature. Published by small imprints such as Abattoir Firm and Uzia. Not exactly light reading. Look him. Powerful communist theory. Rigorous and truthful- no, uh... <sighs> Look, Kim, Dabby dribble for people who can't get shit done. I'm not a full-blown communist, though. What the fuck? I'm gonna have to go in the middle one. Look, Kim, a book. Left wing. I have no comments to you. Uzia enunciates the word diligently. Humanitarian sciences. See, I'm a humanist. Like, that's a good thing, right? Why couldn't it- why wasn't there proper actual middle ground? <laughs> Stands out. Not a lot of critical theory around in Revachol West anymore. Your incendiary remark has failed to provoke him. Critical theory books. What do you think this means? Again, I'm not a philosopher. But whoever has lived here, they have some education and a certain set of interests. Interesting. Thank you, Rhetoric. I'm so glad you added that to the conversation. Really, really useful. Hmm. Well, let's try and go to sleep then, shall we? Maybe a little shut eye. Just an hour. You face the concrete wall. There's a light there, in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete. And cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe? The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close. Until... You feel yourself standing up in the darkness. Right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. Evening? Did I seriously sleep like six fucking hours? No, that's right, shake your damn head. This is stupid. I only wanted an hour. Kim? Buddy? Where are you? Lieutenant is no longer here. Go outside, to the beach. The door is still here. Closed. Feels strange, somehow. You can't get in. Am I dreaming? What's going on? Did I come from here? I... I, I can't remember shit. Oh, no! Well, at least I left this so I could go back if I wanted to. Is uh... I get the feeling, wait, would you go back up to the fucking thing? Thank you. As I get the feeling we're definitely gonna want to go back. Because I've lost Kim. Kim's going to die. I can't even go back out there, can I? Oh no. Ah, Kim's gonna get touched by a communist. Why? At least it'll be by a dude with a masculine beard. An absolutely unstoppable beard, because all communists are. Out we go.
At least that's what the propaganda seems to make out. Can't be a communist unless you've got a wondrous beard. Hello? My son? What? Go down the chain. There's something there. There is? As in this chain? Not this chain. I don't know what the chain is. I'm kind of stupid. What the fuck is happening? This is not down the chain, is it? Why am I in some kind of abyss? I can't access my, uh... I can't access my inventory, my tasks, my anything. Have I ended the game by accident? Oh, here's the chain, okay. What is there? Walk into the water. Now. You see f her footprints on the- oh, it's a dream. Oh no. Oh no, not this, further. Am I accidentally drowning myself? Is that what's going on here? And I'm not realizing it? Oh, it's my girl. Dolores Day! Like, I know that was being alluded to the entire time, but it's so strange. The innocence of humanism. Or, like, the connotation between Dolores and his wife or whatever. Yeah. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship bag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. Okay, don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. This way you're already talking. And you don't even want to talk to her. She'd only be cold and mean. Let her go. Let her go? It's the Holy Queen of the Territories of Mundi and Insulinda. Look at the historical knowledge we could glean. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. To win her back. Win her back? How does that fit in here? What's the Holy Suzerain doing here anyway? Hey, where are you going? I'm going to Marova. To live there. In Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. How are you doing, Harry? I'm in my head. And I miss you. Well, I'm in my head, too. We're all in our heads. Do you miss me there? Sometimes. Not as often as I used to. So much time has passed. More than it seems here. She stares at her feet. Zebra stripes on the intersection. The lights of the video rental glow in her hair. This is everything I warned you about. This is the final dream. Something's off. I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to... She stops mid-sentence, glances to her right, then looks in her bag. She means she doesn't have time to tend to your emotions. You don't have time to tend to my emotions? <laughs> she sighs and looks over her shoulder. What are you doing? Stop saying things like that. I'm sorry, suggestion. I'm trying. What's in the bag? Just my scepter. My globe crucigère. Was I banging a god? What's going on? A toothbrush. Travel documents. The crown of immortality. Aren't you already wearing a crown of immortality? Oh, this. She corrects the wreath on her forehead. It's just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light. Manna and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say. And over her shoulder. Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive, epic showdown. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive, epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really. We don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us, our love, our unborn daughters, it's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Revachon and you. And you have to be alone. 
Oh! Oh, thanks, fucking female Jesus. That's just the way it is. Oh, God, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try now. Kh! <laughs> I bought you this figurine of a headless farm rider. I don't want it. She doesn't take it. It looks expensive. I don't want it. I thought you liked figurines. I thought figurines were for getting you back. That's not what the figurines do, Harry. But then the figurines don't do anything. She looks at the headless farm rider between your fingers and doesn't know what to say. What about the dice? I had some custom dice made in this place. A Doom commercial area. Harry, I don't want things. I want to go to the aerodrome. Okay, I won't give you things then. The figurines won't win her back. Thanks, game, for making this situation even sadder. You said I have a vast soul. You'll always come back to it. We both said a lot of things. We were very young. It was her. You can feel it. You can see it in her tender, long fingers, in her wrists. Her hand wrote it. Said those things. Actually, you didn't say it. You wrote it in a letter. A handwritten letter. I kept it in my paperwork. As a queen reg regnant, I write a lot of letters. She brushes a strand of white hair out of her eye. You need to recite it to her, for effect, all of it, no summaries. Yeah, put a stake through your heart. She'll get hurt too. Lateral damage. Have it right here. Let me refresh your memory. Let's take it. Trip down memory lane. You know what I mean, you left me a letter saying that you'll always come back to me. You can't- fuck it, let's recite. Please, Harry, I just don't have time for this. Summarize. Oh no, fuck it, say it. Fuck it, I'm gonna read it. Every morning, when I step out and you're asleep behind me, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows, until by the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me completely. I step on the light rail and look back. Something, something, bow collector, I know it will be like this. Until I walk back to you. 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 Every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul. And I will always, always come back to it. Okay, stop. Yes. She surrenders. Are you happy now? There's more. Kisses, kisses, kisses. Being a police detective, I performed a handwriting analysis on this, so I know it was you! No, I'm not happy. Fuck it. Then why are you doing this? Kisses, kisses, kisses. Very well. I wrote it. It was morning. You slept. There was a hoarfrost on the ground when I left, on Voyager Road. It was autumn. The first autumn, but Harry, please understand, it was a million years ago. No! It was a hundred million years ago. I was someone else then to the brim with love for you, hanging on your every word. Oh, Harry, you were the coolest. I'm no longer that person. This, she points to herself, has taken her place. It will devour you, Harry. I will eat your mind. The light of the video rental shines through her dress now. A DeLorean figure, cut in black, moves below. Still her. Her legs. Her breasts. Her hips. I was... Cool? The coolest. She closes her eyes. With your leather jacket and your boot cut pants, smoking in the bus stop. I wanted you I wanted you to be the rest of my life that day. And you were for some of it at least. You were my first. My first kiss. My first time to have sex. The first and worst time I fell in love. I will always have that with me. It's a fact. But that is all it is. It's like a ticket stub, Harry. Doesn't have to do anything anymore. Ticket stuff. Yes, let's talk about that too. Let's bring it up. The zoo in Le Jardin. The day we went east of the river to the aquarium first. I was sad about my mother. I don't even know why. The shimmer of the fish tank on my face. The octopuses. It's just a day then, but to think. Were we there now? You could touch my hair. Kiss me. Talk to me about anything. Go. She shakes her head. Virtually anywhere in the world. Not like now. Now our interactions are limited to pain and regret. That's sharp. And precise. No. Why? 
There's still a way to win her back. You know. What you need to do is analyze. There was a bow collector. A light rail. A streetcar number. 42. She nods sadly. That's the light rail that took me to, Cor to Coron to school and work every morning. It's the same stop I met you in, Harry. A hundred thousand million years ago. No human being should still remember the position of Adam such eons ago. Must feel unnaturally sad. A sadness so ancient. It is shared even by Archibacteria. Voyager Road. I know that place. Where is it? It's here, Harry. She looks around. We are on Voyager Road. At the end of it. 300 meters from the stop. We used to come here to rent videos. The house. There. She points across the water into the darkness. We could not pay the electrical bill. Came a lightless tomb. The years you spent training for the militia, my parents, money, it, w it was not good. Surely the alcohol didn't help either. Was I... Were we drinking? She looks at her toenails sticking out from under the gown. Everyone has a little glass now and then. I certainly do, it's a Queen Rejnan thing. I don't think it was the alcohol, it was the inevitability. When you turn back into the person you were, I can see her in you. Under that gown and the wreath. And my crown of immortality? No. You scared her out of me. With your crying, your... She stops. The awful time we wound up having in the cheap rental flats you could afford. Can't you see? You never think you're cool again. You only think that way about new people. The cheap rental. The mold on the walls. And the tap dripping. It won't help anyway. Nothing will. And poisoned by newspaper and news. All I can do is scream at them and think of her secretly. What now? What happens now? What is the next thing we talk about? Is there really anything left? If not, we can always repeat one of the things we've already talked about. Talk about it again. She looks over her shoulder. If you do not feel like doing that, you should let me go to the aerodrome. I know you still love me. Oh my god. Oh my god! Why was this only a medium check? Is this really rapey? Is this really bad? Did I do a bad? With your feet trembling from the steps you took. Tep- wait. Yeah, tepid and fearful. You stand against her. Her body close to you, radiating warmth. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She's not kissing you back. This is wrong. Cheek against mine. Feels like soft fuzz. A bird covered in down feathers. Rushing against your broken capillaries. World's most precious material. Reserved for those she lets close enough to feel it. You're stealing a touch. It's not yours to take. Use her wrist. Hand does not return the grip. The body's rigid. Current of an unease courses through it. Stop, man. Distrust for you. Cover her spine. Her shoulders hunched. She keeps herself stiff. A center. Guarded from your motions. Unresponsive to your guidance. This is why we drank, isn't it? This moment. This shit. This meeting is what caused our drinking into oblivion. I'm not a monster. You're not kissing me back. The moment is ending. She's gonna move her face away from yours. Trying hard not to look at you, when she withdrew and you held onto her hand, she tried not to look at your face and see the expression there. Brother, you should put me in front of a firing squad. I have no words for how I failed you. You didn't kiss me back. She breathes out, heavily, as if something painful just passed through her. Shakes her head. Say nothing. Stand there like a useless dildo. She shakes her head one more time. The evening wind rustles her hair, blowing old newspapers and fast food wrappings down the street. 
Why? Why did you do that to yourself? You know I don't cheat, Harry. I never cheated on you. That's it then. No, Harry. Not yet. There's one more thing. You have to see. She slides her hand down her chest onto her lower stomach and smiles. I'm pregnant. Is it mine? <laughs> of course not. She looks down at her belly and up into your old eyes. I terminated yours. Don't you remember, you poor fuck? Poverty stricken fuck! Now go ahead. She wipes her palms into the silk of her gown. She is fucked up. Like, she is actually... I guess maybe we've taken her to the end of her rope, but he's clearly a defeated old trunk. Leave him alone! <laughs> Why are you making him hurt? You should have just walked away, surely? Ask me more questions. Let's talk about something else. No. It has to end. Do the last one. More questions. Ask more! I get the feeling you're not really Dolores Day. I don't know what you mean. Dolores Day? She looks at you quizzically. It does not seem like a mystery she wants to get into. You're... The voice I heard on the phone. Oh, Harry. You shouldn't have done that. She shakes her head very slowly. Her white hair brushing her shoulders. Do what? Oh, do what? Call me like that. You ruined it. There was still a chance. Should have waited longer. She would have called you instead. Would you have called me yourself? If I just let you? Was I too impatient? Oh, Harry, do you really think so? We haven't talked in years. I don't want to call you. I don't want to hear from you. I think of you less and less every year. Weeks go by without me remembering you. Months already. Soon it will be years. Every season that passes, the lights get less clear. I sit there, in Morova, in the holy gratitude of my bliss. I put my hand on my belly, and smile. The air gets cold around you. She looks down on her stomach, then up at you. Her eyes are full of tremendous distance and mystery. Black-eyed dogs wander the alleys. Apple trees hang with their bony limbs low over the patchwork of roofs, red and black, Revishaw West, the evening sun. She's left and bloomed, far away from us, our vast soul. Your name, it's Dora. That's what the name said over the phone. Dora is short for Dolores. Dubois, yes. Dora Dubois. That's why I think of Dolores Day. Why is that? Why what? Are you Dora Dubois? Oh no. No, 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 no. She shakes her head. We're not doing that again. Oh, the ex. Wasn't I just Dolores Day just a second ago? Now I'm the ex thing. You're confusing me. Look, I have to be at the Lazone Aerodome at 10.20 p.m. I still have a light rail to catch. She keeps glancing over, at her, over her shoulder nervously. I haven't even bought the tickets yet. We all told you. Everyone warned you. Who's everyone? Hello, buddy. Literally all of you. Should have gone even deeper to a place where I never met you because it's impossible to meet people in the abyss of the void. I should have stayed down. I'm glad we're having the conversation. No, I should have stayed down. Fuck it. Sighs with frustration. My friends are waiting for me on the platform. I can't let them wait. It's impolite. What? No, it's impolite. Consigning a lieutenant detective of the Revishol Citizens Militia to eternal damnation. Oh. Cool. Your friends. Say hi to your friends for me, then. I will, she says. The evening wind blows in and the gown wraps around her like a white flag. You're... The morning. The morning? I don't understand. No, I meant mourning. I'm grieving. But you're not even dead. My god, Harry, stop! 
I don't want to hear anything about the morning. Morning someone who's still alive. Any of that. Sorry. <coughs> oh, fuck. Can't do that anymore. I'm not 80 years old. I'm 32. My age are not supposed to mourn. Wait. How old? Harry, you're like 44, right? 12 years younger? So she was like 18 and you were 30 in like a best case scenario. Okay. On second thought, you're Dolores Day, Queen Regiment of the Territories of Mundi and Insulinda, and nothing else. Yes, Harry, I am. Things have gotten much better for me now that I'm the ruler of the known world. She pulls up the silvery sleeve of her gown to check the time. Oh god, it's already so late! I have to go, Harry! A tiny golden watch with red straps around her bony little wrist. But that's not a very good way for things to be. It's not, but... She looks at her, little, her feet. Little golden sandals cover her toes. Tell me there's something good. I don't know why I said but. There is no but. That's it? That's it, yes. She looks up from her toes. We've talked about it a million times. You will get over it, just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. When will you fuck Kim? Where? In hell? Stop, you're only making it worse for him. Never help with anything! <laughs> You're right! I don't even remember who you are anymore! Ha <laughs> ha! No. I'm not getting over it at all. Just take some time. For you, I think it'll take something like 20 years, maybe. It's hard for me too, you know? I used to think I couldn't live without you. She looks you straight in the eye. Her irises are light blue, flecked with green. But I can. She keeps her shoulders squared and her back straight. It's clear you're still making her sad. Hmm. Your innocence, Dolores Day. I'm sorry I made you sad. It's okay. Twenty years. It's so much time. Yes. Only took me one year, maybe two. She smiles and wipes her brow in relief. Whew! You felt that way once? You cannot live without me? Yes, but that time is gone now. So very gone. It doesn't have to be like this. Maybe we could try again. No, Harry. We can't. Why? We already tried again and it didn't work. Is that how it is now? We should just try all good things twice, and then give up? By that logic, not you two. What went wrong when we tried again? I can do it better! I don't know, please! She shuffles from one golden sandaled foot to the other. In the distance, a streetcar screeches. Why? Why can't we be together? Harry, we can't be together. Because you're insane. Her eyes turn to sorrow for locals. She avoids turning them to you. Insane. How? They're turning moist now. Her eyes. She slowly shakes her head and tries to get a hold of herself. Brushing her hands in her gown. What do you mean, insane? You know what I mean. It was just a necktie, it's over anyway. Uh. Everyone gets a little down. A little down? You've worked there for so long you can't even talk like a normal person anymore. It's always lists with you. Questions. Not lists, they're trees. This isn't, this is another one, isn't it? We're in a tree right now. Yes, but it's not possible to talk without trick. No, lists are absolutely normal. Everyone has them. You just list everything you want to ask. I like my lists. It's not just the lists or trees or whatever. She corrects the wreath on her head, with her hands trembling now. It gets sad, Harry. Too sad. People can't get that sad. It's impossible to watch. I mean...
Obviously, we don't know the backstory. We don't know how long she tried to help. We don't know how much she really put into this. But right now, she is being incredibly insensitive. Jesus, he's mentally fucking ill. He's a fucking hero who solved all these cases. I understand if he hurts you and, like, you know, doesn't... I don't... I'm not excusing that. When I say I understand if he hurts you from her point of view, and that's when that's why she would want to leave, but... Jesus... He's calling him insane and hell you haven't said what we do I'd understand if we were like incredibly abusive but Jesus just abandoning him because he gets sad seemingly after not too much time either like oh fuck man Harry doesn't deserve this Harry deserves better than you and she's rubbing it in his face now as well other people get sad too but not like you you stay down for too long until you start giving your thoughts names and talking to things. In conclusion, you're ill. You're an old, insane man, and you have to be in hell until the end of your life. And I have to go to Morova. Don't go. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 8.30. Her fingers wrap around the bag handle. I'm gonna go now. You've sworn a holy oath, Harry. She herself begged you to not go. Wait, can't we sit down and have a coffee first? There's a cafeteria on the corner. No, that would only be painful and dull. The aerodrome life, love and laughter are waiting for me. The cafeteria, dust, hell and tragic comedy. Hold on. What are you going to do in Moreover? Light? Life? Culture? It's so much better than here. Everything here reminds me of you and the horrible times we had. The nights we stayed up fighting for our dying love. I have to wipe it all off me and be clean again. I want to be a good person again, not this. Not what you made me into. But I swore I wouldn't let you go. You told me. You asked me to be this way. That was someone else. I betrayed her, overwrote her, and I'm happier for it. I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. Will we ever see each other again? I won't see you. You will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry, this is a dream, can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? She looks around. A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again, then? Right here. Tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. I'm suffocatingly beautiful and young, and I smell of tutti fruity chewing gum. Like I did after that time when I asked you for your forgiveness. After leaving you for the first time so long ago. I like this. Oh yes. This is real darkness. It's not death or war or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. I imagine it's his nightmare making her into such a cold bitch. She can't really be this fucking cold to him, right? This is absolutely why we became the man we are. Get up, Harry. We got work to do.